In last week's tip, I showed you how to convert a reference line into a table calculation. This week, I'm going to show you how to convert a reference line into a level of detail expression. So let's look at a few examples. Let's start by simply looking at sales across time. So we're looking at it by year and quarter right now. If I go ahead and just drag on an average reference line, I'm just going to go ahead and show the values as well. We can see the values that we'd like to get back from our level of detail expression. So let's go ahead and create a calculated field. I'm going to call it average sales per quarter. And what I want to start off with is if, um, if I go ahead and edit my table calc, this is the first part we want to build, the sum of sales. And then outside of that, we're going to do the average. So let's see what that does. So first I want to look at, I want to look at for each quarter of order date. I want to get the sum of sales. Okay, so that's kind of what the left hand of the table calculation is doing. So that's kind of this part over here on the left hand side where it says value. So then what we need to do is we need to aggregate, we need to take the average across the years. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fix it on the year of order date. And I'm going to take the average of the previous values. Oops. Okay, so there we go. So now just to show you what it's doing, I'm going to put that on the label shelf. And you can see it matches my reference line everywhere across the view. So I could, in theory, let me take that reference line off, move this to the detail shelf. And then I could add a reference line that is based on my average sales per quarter. And there we go, we have that measure. Now this can be super useful, so let me actually edit this a bit. Um, let's not even do that. Let's go ahead, yeah, that's fine. Let's leave it there for now. The other thing this is useful for now is I could look at the difference between the sales and the average sales per quarter. So let me duplicate this sheet and I could create a new calculated field difference from average sales per quarter. And what I want to do now is I want to take the sum of sales and I want to subtract from that my average. There we go. And now I could put that on the view instead, remove my reference line, maybe change these into bars, and I could tell which quarters are above and below my average sales per quarter. I could then take that, and maybe I want to color code those bars. I'm going to call this above average. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say, is my difference greater than zero? That's going to return a Boolean. And I'm going to put that on color. And now I can see which ones are above or below. Now in this case, what I'd like to do is it depends on what we want to highlight here. So let's say that we want to highlight the negative things. So the ones that are below. So I'm going to make those um, uh, red and the other ones gray. So now we can see the difference from the average. So super simple use case there. <clears throat> so let me again open up that calculation. So first we need to get the sales for each quarter. And then for each year, we want to take the average of those sales. OK, let's look at another example. Let's say, in this case, we want to look at ship mode and segment. And uh, let's look at maybe the quantity sold. And we get something like that. And again, maybe this time we want to look at, uh, well, let's start by looking at the average for each, for each uh, pain again. So we'd write this in a similar way. So I'm going to call this average quantity uh, per ship mode and segment. I know these are long names, but I'm doing it to make it a bit more clear to you. So first, I want to fix it on both items. So ship mode and segment. 
and then I want to take the sum of quantity, and that's going to give me the length of each bar. So I want to close that off, and now I want to do another fixed, and this time, because, because um, we're splitting up for each pane, that's defined by our ship mode. So for each ship mode, we want to take the average of the um, quantity. Okay, so let's hit OK. And again, let's put that on the label shelf. And we get 1898. And notice how when I hover over my reference line, I get 1898. So there we go. Pretty simple. So the next example. So let's say this time, let's get rid of all this stuff. And let's say this time we want to put on an average line across the table. <clears throat> and I'm going to go ahead and show the value for this as well. So I'm going to insert the computation and then the value. OK, so there we go. I know the value is awfully precise, but that's OK. So in this case, we want to look across the whole table. So uh, I'm going to call this average quantity. Um, across ship mode and segment. So in this case, I'm going to start off with the same thing. So fixed on ship mode and segment. I'm going to do the sum of quantity. OK, so that's going to basically return the length of each bar. And then I want to take the average of all of those. So I'm fixing it on nothing because I want to get, uh, I want to ignore, essentially ignore ship mode in segment. I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to put that on the label shelf. And notice we get 3156, which matches our reference line. OK, so uh, let me see if we have another example. So let's say we want to look at um, maybe the, uh, we want to look at, uh, let's do country and state. And we want to look at the profit for each state. And what we, what we really want to look at is, or actually, let's just do sales, make it a bit simpler. And in this case, we want to look at the sales uh, for each state compared to the national average. OK, so let's say sales per state versus national average, or versus, let's just say, US average. That's fine. Sorry, a bit of typos here. Um, OK, so again, what we want to do is we want to fix this on the, on state. And I want to take the sum of sales. And that's going to give me the sales for each state. So let me just show that to you. So let's start by putting that onto the label shelf, or I'm sorry, the detail shelf. And if we hover over California, notice we're getting the same value, or any state, we're getting the same value for both things. So now what I want to do is I want to get the, uh, let's, let's uh, yeah, that's fine. And then what I want to do is I want to take the average of all of these in order to get the U.S. average. Okay, so now you'll see our U.S. average here is 46.882. And I get that same value irrespective of the state that I pick. Um, OK. <clears throat> so now what we could do is, again, we could just create a calculation. So difference from US average. And maybe we'll call it percent difference even. Let's be a bit tricky here. So I'm going to take the sum of sales minus the sum of sales per state. Uh, let's see. Um, no, that's not right. So I'm going to take the sum of sales per state versus US average. And uh, let's see, I did that slightly wrong. So the difference from the US average. So uh, yeah, so minus, so sales minus the US average. I probably should have given that a better name. Um, and then I want to wrap that in brackets and divide by the sum of sales. So this will give us the percent difference. So let me actually go ahead and rename this one. So this should be, uh, this should just be, um, nope, that's the wrong field. So I want to do, what did I call this one? Sales per state versus US average. So it's not actually what this is doing. 
This is the US average sales. Okay, so now if I go back in and look at my percent, you'll see this probably makes a bit more sense now. So we're looking at the sales for each state, subtracting the US average, and then dividing those two by the sum of the US average. So let's put that on, let's, uh, let's move sales to detail and US average to color. And now we can see almost everything is, so California, um, so you'll see we've got its, uh, let's actually format this as a percentage. Percentage, uh, let's just do zero decimals. And we can see California is 457,000. The US average is 46,000, which is an 876% increase versus the US average. Okay, so that's three use cases. Hopefully you found those helpful. And uh, we'll be, Lauren, Lauren will be back next week with her next tip. Have a good day.